Hey guys, my name is Abhishek and welcome back to MBPS Tracer channel. Today we are going to discuss the third type of extracellular accumulation that is protein accumulations. So let's start. Uh, protein accumulation, it is otherwise known as albuminous type of accumulation. This uh, constitutes four types of accumulations like mucoid swellings, fibrinoid changes, hyaluronosis, and amyloid diosis. These three mucoid, fibrinoid and hyaluronosis, these are the stages of connective tissue disorganization. What do you mean by disorganization? The connective tissue will disorient because of accumulation of blood plasma protein and when the blood plasma proteins will be present in the connective tissue, it will increase the vascular permeability. That is known as plasma orgia and this Vascular permeability is uh, will increase the hydration quantity inside the connective tissue that will lead to finally the destruction of connective tissue. This amyloidosis it is a kind of disorder that leads to the formation of abnormal fibrillar protein. This abnormal fibrillar component is a protein polysaccharide complex. We will discuss this amyloidosis and all these things in a brief uh, condition. So let's start from the mucoid swelling. Mucoid swelling, what do you mean by this? This is a superficial and reversible disorganization of connective tissue as we have known this. And it, this is a reversible kind of cell injury. So what is the mechanism of this mucoid swelling? In this, the redistribution of glycosaminoglycans or the ground substance of this connective tissue or the extracellular spaces will increase the vascular permeability similarly causing the plasmorrhea and then the more globulin and blood glycoproteins accumulation. Glycoproteins like mucin and mucoid will get accumulated and they uh, possess the hydrophilic property. Hydrophilic means they will uh, bring more and more water inside the cells and tissue causing the swelling of main substance of the stroma and finally causing the destruction of connective tissue. So this is the mucoid type of swelling because there will be mucin and mucoid at the blood glycoproteins. So it is mucoid swelling. How can we know that the mucoid swelling occurs through microscopically if we will track the cross section of the cells it will show metachromasia this is a distinguishing characteristic features of the mucoid swelling that when the tissue or cells will be stained with a dye it will show other colors means the tissue staining other color than the dye which is used previously for example if the tissue Previously, it has the basophilic color of the main substances in which the connective tissues are present and if it will be stained with the toluidin blue reagent, then it will show a reddish color. Reddish color, this is due to the swollen collagen fibers okay, that are present in the connective tissues. When, this, when does this mucoid swelling occurs? It occurs in the immunopathological or autoimmune disorder. Immuno means if it will be affecting our immunological diseases or disorder, then autoimmune disorders, self-regulated autoimmune disorder, then hypoxic condition, then allergic condition, then if there will be hypertension. In autoimmune disorder, the most important one is the rheumatism as we know this. What the organs it will be affecting mostly? It will be affecting our heart. Mostly the heart means the arterial walls or the heart valves and the endocardium and the epicardium layers of the heart will get affected and caused by this mucoid accumulations causing this mucoid swelling. Okay. So next we are going to discuss the another type of protein extracellular accumulation that is the fibrinoid swelling in the walls of vessels. It consists of two stages of fibrinoid changes. Before that we should know what is a fibrinoid. Due to the accumulation of fibrinoid it causes swelling and that fibrinoid it is a complex substance containing the decomposed collagen fibers 
proteins blood plasma fibrins and it also contains the nucleoproteins okay it consists of two stages in which first of all there will be the uh, accumulation of the fibrinoid causing the fibrinoid swelling and the second stage is the fibrinoid necrosis causing the death of the cell as it causes the fibrinoid necrosis or further causing hyaluronosis that is also one kind of or the next type of protein extracellular accumulation and it also causes sclerosis it results in the irreversible type of cell injury that means the cell cannot revert back again to its normal position the fibrinoid swelling it is deep here written because it consists of the destruction of the main substance of the connective tissue due to the accumulation of fibrinoid how we can identify this fibrinoid swelling by microscopically that the homogeneous collagen bands will be present but it will be impregnated with the plasma proteins then comes the fibrinoid swelling it can be divided into two types according to the degree of spreading or propagation that is generalized and localized if the swelling is present all over of our body then it is generalized and if it is present in a particular organ or a particular space or a region it is known as localized the generalized cause may be due to the systemic diseases of the connective tissue that is hypertension or diabetes like uh, disorders and it localized it may occur due to the chronic inflammations of the connective tissue okay so this was all about the fibrinoid swelling okay so next we will be discussing another type of protein extracellular accumulation that is hyaluronosis in hyaluronosis there will be accumulation of hyaline like semi transparent glassy pink structures or masses in the stroma of connective tissue because they will be having the colors exactly like the hyaline cartilage okay why does this hyaluronosis occurs if the plasma impregnations of the connective tissue or fibrinoid swelling this will be the reason of hyaluronosis also and inflammations of the connective tissue and necrosis and sclerosis sclerosis means stiffening of the connective tissue this will be the causes of the hyaluronosis then hyaluronosis according to the location localization it is divided into two types first one is the vascular hyaluronosis and second one is the connective tissue hyaluronosis in the vascular hyaluronosis if the arterioles or the small arteries will be thickened will be thickened but sharply narrowed lumen the narrow the, the lumen of the arteries or the arterioles will be narrowed this will be because of hyaline accumulation in the sub endothelial layers of the vessels this accumulation of hyaline causes the elastic plate losing the elasticity of the arteries and arterioles and it will destroy the middle membrane of the facial walls it causes the rupture and occlusions of vessels the result of the vascular hyaluronosis is causing the rupture or occlusion of the vessels it will arise due to the systemic diseases because it is generalized in condition it means it is present in uh, all over the uh, all over the body then connective tissue connective tissue uh, hyaluronosis if it is uh, the hyaluronosis is present inside the connective tissue it means it is particularly localized in the connective tissue so it comes under the localized type of spreading of hyaluronosis it occurs in the scars or adhesions or chronic inflammations of the connective tissue this vascular hyaluronosis can occur three types according to pathogenetic cause of formations that is simple lipohyaline and compound hyaline okay so next we are going to discuss another type of protein accumulation that is amyloidosis in amyloidosis there will be the accumulation of amyloid it is an abnormal metabolic product and that accumulation will be taking mostly in the interstitial tissues and the vascular walls like arteries and veins the amyloid it has two compositions or the two components that is f component and p component in f component it consists of the fibrillar proteins that will be produced by the amyloidoblast and p component is the blood plasma 
glycoproteins that is the mucin and mucoid this fibular proteins are nothing but the complex protein protein these are the complex protein plus polysaccharide okay this is the complex of protein and polysaccharide then comes the what are the amyloidoblasts that will be producing these kinds of proteins they are nothing but the uh, macrophages the plasma cells myelogenetic cells cardiomyocytes and beta cells of pancreas or fibroblasts okay then the amyloidosis can be of two type according to its formation if it will be if uh, it will be attached with the collagen fiber then it will be called as pericollagen if it will be attached with the reticular fiber then it will be called as periretikular uh, so this is a mode of formation of amyloidosis in the collagen fiber or the pericollagen amyloidosis it will be invading the adventitia of the small and middle sized vessels mostly it will be affecting the vesicular walls this is the collagen fiber or pericollagen amyloidosis in periretikular amyloidosis what will be happening it will be uh, accumulating along the basal membrane of vessels and glands reticular networks of parenchymatous organs like liver kidney spleen and uh, adrenal glands this is the inter interstitial tissue condition of accumulation of the amyloid then we are going to read about the classification of amyloidosis the amyloidosis can be classified according to the cause propagation organ that it involves the type of amyloid fibril protein that are formed okay according to the cause it may be primary hereditary secondary and senary primary means idiopathic means if the reason is not known hereditary means if it is derived from your family and secondary if acquired and senile at the final stage of the amyloidosis or the death uh, cell necrosis then propagation means uh, if the amyloidosis has occurred then where it has occurred if it is generalized means occurred whole uh, surfaces of our body and in localized means if it is occurring in the specific location or specific organs involved organ the organ in which the amyloidosis occurs like cardio means heart nephropathy means the uh, kidney the neuro means the central nervous system then hepatoma means liver epinephron means the adrenal gland and aupd it's a special type of endocrine cells uh, that produces the polypeptide hormones if it is aff uh, affected with the amyloidosis it will be coming under the amyloid organ then type of amyloid fibril proteins form it can be al aa ae and ax al means amyloid light chain the light chain is made up of due to the immunoglobin light chain if it will be associated if the fibrillar protein will be formed by associating uh, with the immunoglobin light chain then it will be called as al amyloid light chain if it will be associating with the serum and that serum is a reactant of apoprotein of high density lipoprotein means it will be a part of protein that will be attaching with this amyloid then it will be called as amyloid associated amyloid endocrine if the uh, amyloid will be occurring in the endocrine hormonal polypeptide if it will be associated with a hormonal polypeptide then it will be called as amyloid endocrine in amyloid senile it will be related with the pre albumin okay in this amyloidosis we can uh, examine ma macroscopically means uh, observing uh, uh, not observing through the microscope but observing through your eye it will be enlarged and dense organ and it will be fragile on incision then the color will be like pale and waxy and varnished in appearance and it will be also sebaceous or uh, sago like appearance in the organs okay the outcome is unfavorable because the amyloidosis uh, has a ch percentage of chance to be cured like uh, 10% and 90% it cannot be cured so the outcome is unfavorable
So next we are going to read about the laboratory test of amyloid. In the laboratory test, how the doctors see that through the biopsy test. By doing the biopsy of the rectum or tissues from the tongue, lip and the abdominal fat fat, the doctor recognizes that yes, there could be a amyloidosis. How uh, microscopically it is identified? Microscopically it is identified through two tests that is iodine test and sulfuric acid test. If the tissue containing the amyloid, okay, if the tissue will be containing the amyloid and it will be treated with the iodine test, then it will show initially the brown color and upon acting with the sulfuric acid, when the sulfuric acid will be uh, given to this brown color tissue, then it will further show the blue color. Through this way, we can uh, know that amyloidosis is present in the tissue. In histological cross-section through uh, view, we can stain the histological tissue and we can see different colors. In uh, plain polarized light, we will see the apple green red fringes and Congo red stain will be occurring. And if you will use the stain like hematoxylin and eosin, it will be showing like homogeneous pink color. And if we will be using methyl violet dye, which is then it will be showing pink color. This is the metachromasia condition in which the color of the stain or the result of the tissue is different, color is different than the dye used. Also, it can be stained as immunohistochemically. How it can be identified immunohistochemically? Because according to the different kind of fibers that are present in the amyloid, there will be specific antibodies will be produced against that fibrils. So, what will happen? We can access or we can examine those fibrils or those antibodies through this immunohistochemical method and we will identify which type of amyloidosis is that. On electron microscope, it will be appearing as non-branching fibrils. You should remember here is that it is a non-branching fibrils and it will be around 7.5 to 10 nanometer wide. So this was our today's topic. If you find this video helpful for you, please do like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.